Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report. Joining us this weekend, Jim McCormick, agmarket.net, and John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. We started the week with a continuation of fund liquidation, recessionary fears, trying to recover into the end of the week. So, John, is fund liquidation over here? I'd like to hope it's slowed down, at least at this stage. And again, you know, the corn market, in terms of how those funds were acting, they're following last year pretty much to a script. You see this continued pullback. Now, we did see them turn the corner again after the 4th of July, at least start adding some value back in. You know, so we had the hard sell off on the 5th, obviously a thin trading day. You know, that's kind of the clean out day. Plus, it's the day they report for the, you know, CFTC and the Commitment of Traders report. So, so maybe we're seeing a little bit of a turn here, but, you know, funds are a big ship. They don't turn things around quickly. You know, that keeps me a little cautious of the market. If we get some rally up, which we've obviously had here the last couple of days, that might bring some more selling or some more long liquidation back into the market on those positions. So hopefully we are there, but we're going to need some news events and something to possibly turn that and make that money want to flow back into the market overall. And Jim, when you look at what the Fed is proposing to do in the Fed Minute meetings, and then the payroll of unemployment was like 3.6% here on Friday, that kind of gives the Fed more impetus to really raise rates here, doesn't it? Exactly. I think right now it's almost a guarantee they're going to raise the rates three quarters of a point in July. And you know what that's going to do is that's going to continue to keep the fund money on the sidelines. We believe when the Fed came out last month in June and essentially said, hey, we're going to raise interest rates. Our job is to kill off demand. Killing off demand drives down the demand for commodities. A lot of that money left the markets here the last couple of weeks. And uh, with this uh, hot jobs number, better than a lot of people thought, it probably is just going to give a reason to keep that money on the sidelines. I think you could see some regular ag trading funds come back in, Michelle, if the weather would start to really get warm and dry, like some of the models are suggesting. So, John, is the high in for the year, those contract highs? At least at this point, you know, especially given some of the numbers that we're seeing out there, maybe some of the demand concerns, recessionary play, and just the pullback in the commodity space in general, I'm going to say at least at this time frame. But obviously, you know, weather still trumps all, and obviously we got to see what happens in terms of the geopolitical side of things. You know, those headlines that can pop anytime can obviously bring that money flow back into the market. We're just going to stay volatile and, you know, kind of agreeing with the uh, uh, what Jim was saying there too, we're watching what's going to happen with these weather models. If we do see some production losses, the global supplies are still tight in the grain world and we could see that money flow back in. But at least at this time frame, it feels that way. So Jim, is weather enough to push us to those levels and retest those highs there? I mean, it does look hot and dry in the end of July. You had the drought monitor out on Thursday and it showed expanding drought. I think, you know, the weather is going to can give us a really good push. I mean, a lot of areas in the Midwest did get rain this past week. That kind of took some of the edge off. The models are getting dry. So I do think we can get a pretty good push retracement. In fact, the reality is, I think, Michelle, it is going to be very, very hard to justify going back to the the emotional peak that we, that we saw when the market was trading inflation. They were trading the war and they are trading the uncertainty of the weather. With the inflation trade, I think, onto the sidelines, uh, I think the highs are in unless something really changes dramatically. And right now, that's not in the cards. They're looking for a little bit warmer, drier bias into the latter part of July, but not a complete shutdown of the weather, you know, rain across the Midwest. So you mentioned the war, and wheat has had the biggest correction, obviously, over $5 off of the contract highs here. John, it looks like we've taken all the war premium out. Do we need to put some of that back in? I still think we need to bring some of that back in. Yeah, you know, obviously markets can sometimes swing, you know, like Jim was saying, based on extremes. Again, emotional trade, just momentum trade. This thing turned into a momentum trade to the downside. You know, we've seen some improvement in some of the areas in terms of global production. You know, the Russian wheat crop looks very, very strong. You know, but then we got to still see how things play out. You know, again, we're still watching for some concerns regarding food issues globally. And wheat being down, you know, yesterday it was sub $8 at the start of the day. Or, you know, coming back through that here today. Uh, just show us that. So obviously, I think we've taken it too far to the downside. We need to bring some things back in. But again, you know, those highs from what we saw probably in the spring are kind of out the window at this time frame, barring some true events. So if the highs are in for the year, what do you do for marketing and how does recession maybe impact the livestock complex? We'll talk about that when we come back on U.S. Farm Report. <laughs> 